正会。Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 108, Get Lost, Medication to End Offspring, for Men's Use. Ren Wan Yun lowered her head and looked at the paper packet that Shen Miao placed on her hands and her body could not help but tremble. What kind of a good method is to give all Yi Niang the medication? Even if one is not able to give birth to any sons, there will be a second, a third. Second Shen, you will not be able to stop it. Shin Miao's words seemed to have a slightly bewitching sound to them as when they landed on one's ears, it was rather pleasing. Why would I believe you? Who knows if arsenic is being placed inside? Ren Wan Yun said with disdain. Since second Shen do not believe me then let a maid bring a little of it to the physician for a look, or perhaps feed it to some animals. Else it would also be the same if one were to purchase it themselves. I only provide the direction and second Shen must be willing to look into the detailed matters. Why would I do this? Ren Wan Yun stared at Shen Miao and said coldly. Why? Shen Miao slightly thought about it, most probably is that once second Shu find out about the infertility, then the seventh D son's position can be seated stably. Not only that, As second Shu a only legacy, seventh younger brother would be able to take over second Shu's mantle. The rarer something is, the greater the value will be. Ren Wan Yun laughed, Do you think that I do not know what kind of intention you have? Shin Miao I really underestimated you. You actually want the second household to end its lineage. One must not say it like this. Shen Miao pretended to be surprised. How can the second household end its lineage? Is not seventh younger brother around? However can it be that second Shen is under the impression that it is still possible to have another baby with second Shu? She said jokingly, even if second Shen have that ability and capability, one have to see if second Shu is willing or not. Impudent. Xiang Lan rebuked angrily. You have no sense of shame. Ren Wan Yun was so angry that her face was flushed red. Shen Miao's words were clearly ridiculing that she was old and that Shen Gui, a person who is lustful for beauties, would feel disdain for her. But Ren Wan Yun also understood that after so many years Shen Gui was no longer that gentle with her, and her face was no longer appealing to Shen Gui so it was difficult to have another child. Be it no sense of shame or impudent, at the end this is all for you. Shen Miao smiled gently, I have already given second Shen a road to live, but it all depends on second Shen's choice to walk out or block the road. She stood up and remained still as if she was thinking of something before partially looking back. Of course second Shen can also tell second Shu of the matter since you are all a family. But one would like to remind you that now my father and mother have a bad relationship with old Furen. and all pretenses are shed so one is not afraid of the other. Ren Wan Yun sat there without speaking as Xiang Lan and Kai Ju stared vigilantly at Shen Miao. Words have been said to as such, will take one's leave. Shen Miao smiled as she walked out. After Shen Miao left, Xiang Lan took a step forward and asked Ren Wan Yun, Furin will really listen to fifth young lady's words. Fifth young lady do not have any good intentions. Kaiju parroted, she clearly did that to put one against master. It is to go against master. Ren Wan Yun spoke lowly, but now master and I are no longer people standing on the same line. Furun means. Xiang Lan stared with her eyes wide open. Ren Wan Yun lowered her head and said, let me think. In the eastern courtyard, naturally there were people who were concerned with every move at this end. So when Shen Miao and Jing stepped out of the door, They saw an unfamiliar maid coming over with a smile. Fifth young lady, Wan Yi Niang has heard that you have come to the courtyard and want to invite you over for a chat. Another day, there are still things to be done. Shen Miao did not give any face at all and directly rejected. That maid felt awkward but also helpless, and could only watch as Shen Miao and Entourage walked away before turning back to report to Wan Yi Niang. Is she clearly distinguishing the relationship with us? Wan Yi Niang was somewhat angry but there was more worry. She said to Shen Dongling, Dongling, will this fifth young lady get together with Furin and deal with us? How could it be? Shen Dongling shook her head, 
it is because of eldest sister's matter that they would not go together, then why is it that fifth young lady kept turning a blind eye to our goodwill? When Yi Niang kept walking back and forth, can it be that she looks down on our background? Speaking till here, her voice had gotten dim, after all she is a young lady, Yi Niang. Shen Dong Ling placed the book down and said with some headache, where are you thinking to? It might not be because of us that fifth younger sister is not willing to get along. From what I see, fifth younger sister is not warm to the entire Shen residence, and one fear that she does not want to have any relation with anyone from the second household, so she turned a blind eye to us. Therefore there is no use to express goodwill. It is better not to do such things in the future. But. Wan Yi Niang still wanted to say something. There is no buts. Shen Dong Ling interrupted her words, we behave ourselves and if there are no mistakes, naturally trouble will not come. At the other end, Jing's was asking Shen Miao in a softly voice upon returning back to their room, young lady, will that second furin really drug second master? Definitively. Shen Miao looked at her nails and lightly said, Ren Wan Yun most valued children, but now one daughter and one son continuously died, leaving a single child, Shen Yu on bow. Unfortunately Shen Gui is not a kind-hearted person so only by drugging Shen Gui, she can protect Shen Yu on bow's position. But what if Second Furin tells Second Master about the matter? Gu Yu had been worried about this the most. It will not happen. If Shen Gui know that he was being drugged with medication to end off spring, he would hate Ren Wan Yun to the bone that even if Shen Yu on Bo is his only child, he would still lash out on Shen Yu on Bo. Even if Ren Wan Yun did it for Shen Yu on Bo, she would definitely cover this thing up to death. Perhaps Shen Gui would not discover the truth that he would not be able to have children forever and even if a physician take a look, he would never think that it was Ren Wan Yun that fed it to him. So. Jing's bit her teeth and seemed to be hesitating before she finally spoke what was in her heart, even if Second Furin drug Second Master unknowingly and Second Master truly cannot have any more heirs, is there still not a Seventh Young Master? Currently Seventh Young Master is young but after he grow up and understand about the matter, one fear that he will take revenge for Second Young Master and Eldest Young Lady. To have an enemy raised from young and with Young Lady making such an oath, Shen Miao said to Ren Wan Yun that she would not have any intention to harm Shen Yu on Bo else heavens would strike her. Jing's was still somewhat shocked after hearing such a poisonous oath. Since the vow was made, I have no intention on dealing with Shen Yu on Bo. Shen Miao said, although this is the case but seventh young master will definitely view young lady as the enemy. Gu Yu reminded. Having an enemy lying in the dark waiting for an opportunity, one would need to wait for him to grow up first. Shen Miao smiled. Unfortunately, Shen Yu on Bo did not have the opportunity to grow up. Just a year later, there was a plague in Ding Capital and Shen Yu on Bo would die due to the infection of smallpox. Everyone in the Ding Capital panicked but at that time Shen Miao had already married Fu Ziyu Yi. And fortunately Shenzhen was fighting a battle in the northwest region and escaped this calamity. The nobility in the capital was still alright but there was a number of deaths among the commoners. Shen Yu on Bo was unable to escape it. Shen Miao had always believed that the heaven's principles were clear and transparent, but it was that this karma was not enough. In the previous lifetime, the karma of all the sins that Shen Gui and wife had committed all fell on to Shen Yu on Bo. But the second household still had Shen Yu on and Shen King. In this lifetime, without them if one were to follow down the road of the previous lifetime, Shen Yu on Bo will eventually lose his life because of the plague. Instead of eradicating to the last one now, it was better to fill their lives with hope. Shen Gui believed that he still had a son. And Ren Wan Yun also thought that Shen Yu on Bo would replace Shen Yu on, and when that day finally comes that Shen Yu on Bo is unable to escape the fate of heavens, then at that time the desperation of the lack of heirs would break out in the second household, and swallow them entirely. The second household was destined to have no descendants but they were now filled with hope, not knowing that misfortune was already heading their way slowly. One only need to wait till that day where the sickle comes falling thoroughly harvesting the vitality in its entirety. The chess path was already prepared, 
and the pieces were also heading forward step by step in accordance of the route set. Was not this good, young lady? Mo King came by just now. Beilu walked over and said in a predicament, he said that the bank notes previously given are spent. Is there still a need to go to Bao Xiang Lu? Beilu was somewhat embarrassed, and also did not understand as where would there be a master that would give their subordinate money to go find young ladies. Moreover this was not squandered normally. How could this be letting the subordinates handling the matter? This was clearly providing money for the subordinate to enjoy and it was hateful that Mo King got such a good task but still put on a look of pain every time, making one suffer a toothache upon seeing the scene. Go and pass 500 Liang to him. Shen Miao said. Bei Lu revealed a look of pain as she heard Shen Miao giving additional instructions. Also tell Mo King to say those words to Liu Ying. The few maids in the room were surprised and looked at Shen Miao with curiosity. After all they did not know what words were the words that Shen Miao mentioned. Bei Lu was about to go out when she suddenly remembered something and said, Young lady, previously Zhang Mama from Rong Jingtang came over, seemingly to inquire about Master and Furin separating from the family. Ever since that day where the truth was known from Jing Guangxing's mouth, Luo Zhu Yan had a big quarrel with old Shen Furin and informed Shen Xin of the matter afterwards. Naturally Shen Xin was furious and at that moment headed to Rong Jing Tang to argue. Luo Zhu Yan wholeheartedly wanted to separate from the family and Shen Xin was disheartened toward the Shen family due to the matter and was naturally in favor. Even if he did not want old General Shin's estate, he still insisted on a separation. Old Shen Furin knew that Shin Xin's money and prestige was still required at the moment, and pretended to have a stroke and fainted from the events that day. It really made one laugh and angry. Now that Zhang Mama came over to inquire, naturally was to cast oblique aspersions and uncover the wind direction of the first household thinking that Shen Xin and Luo Zhu Yan only said that in a fit of anger. If there is another inquiry then tell her that the intention is set on separating from the family, and one need to bother her to take good care of old Furin. If old Furin's health continue to be unwell then one would invite the family's elders over to do the division. The family elders had no regard for old Shen Furin's background. Old General Shen was biased towards Shen Xin when he was alive so naturally the elders would be biased towards Shen Xin. If the elders came over to divide the family, they would not let old Shen Furin get a good deal. This servant understands. Bei Lu walked out the door with a smile. Shen Miao sat in front of the table for a while. Today's row just opened and one need to plan even more as it was not an easy thing to take revenge and protect the Shen family at the same time. Everything must always take a step at a time. These few disturbances in the capital were only gossiped over a cup of tea or after a meal. After discussing and a smile, no one remembered them, even if they were a topic of idle conversation. After a few days they would be ignored because of other fresher news. Humans died and lights get extinguished. The world was just that cold. Bao Xiang Lu was still bustling like in the past, and recently there was a new bunch of Persian dancers that entered, and they were beautiful and brazen. The blue-blooded young men of the capital rushed over like ducks and Bao Xiang Lu's usually booming business had become overflowing. Men had a voracious desire for fresh things and enamored with the new, bored with the old. The new dancers would be popular for a period of time, and the previously popular courtesans were cheerless as cold sparrows nest at the door. But among these greedy men, there was one that was different. When he walked to the door, the young lady at the door waved her handkerchief and smiled, Lord Mo will not be picking young lady Liu Ying today. Mo King placed the money into the young lady's hands and said, same old rules. That young lady was half envious and half jealous. This lord is an affectionate person. It is really Liu Ying's past life fortune. Finishing, she went up to call for people. Everyone rushed over for the new young ladies but Mo King was not shaken by thunder and picked Liu Ying. Those who did not know thought that he had real feelings for Liu Ying. Only the two of them, he and Liu Ying knew if there were feelings or not. Opposite of Bao Xiang Lu, at the windows of Gu I Hua Lu, there were three persons drinking together. Ji Yu Shu pointed from afar at Mo King's figure as he entered Bao Xiang Lu. Look, 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 
He went over again. What is there to look? Jiao Yang rolled his eyes at Ji Yu Shu, going there once every three days, every trip is a night and leaving once the second day breaks, without staying for an additional moment more. This is something that even you are able to know by heart, so is there a need to be surprised? Ji Yu Shu was not to be outdone and stared back at Jiao Yang, are you a fool? How would third Z older brother, who just returned? know about matters that we had knowledge of. I am here telling him clearly about it. At the other side of them, Zi Jingxing was leaning against the couch looking lazily at Bao Xiang Lu. It was an unprecedented day for him not to wear purple and was wearing a dark narrow long robe, T slash N, think slim fit robe, making him appear more solemn. However upon closer look, his brows were covered in dust, clearly indicating that he had just returned in a rush. Third Zi, how was the matter dealt with? How are those people? Jiao Yang asked. All were suicide soldiers and no information could be dug out. All of them were killed. Zi Jingxing was preoccupied, time is pressing, so the movements here have to be fast. What is the use of moving quickly? Ji Yushu complained. The stuff was not found. There were some movements from Shen Yu on previously and he was very close to Fu Ziyu Yi. Perhaps there were some leverages in his hands but now he is dead. Jiao Yang pondered, Fu Ziyu Yi should have thought of ways to seize those things from Shen Yuan. I want to take another trip to the Shen residence. Zi Jingxing frowned, it is not possible it cannot be found. Forget it, do not mention about this first. Ji Yushu interrupted their conversation, speaking of which, we have been keeping watch here for so long watching that Mo guy running to Bao Xiang Lu so often. What is the meaning of it? Could it be that Shen Yang lady is lenient and warm? Even to provide the money for the subordinate to look for a young lady. This kind of cushy job and such extravagant hand, is even more generous than me, the manager of the Feng Zhang pawn shop. Have you seen one who runs away from a young lady at the break of light? Jiao Yang looked at Ji Yu Shu. Why is it that when I remember you looking for young lady Xiao Yao, you will rascally stick yourself in the other's room and not leave, hating that you are unable to be at her side all day? Which one would not know about amorous feelings and would at least talk a little? For one to leave at such a timing every day, it look rather like the completion of a task. Are your eyes grown on top of your head? Zi Jingxing glanced at the two of them, did you not see that there is still someone involved? His eyes swept down and both of them were surprised. As they looked over to where Zi Jingxing was looking, they saw that that on the opposite side of the street facing Bao Xiang Lu, there stood a green-clad male staring at Liu Ying's little building, lost in thoughts. Look rather ordinary. Ji Yushu said, looking at his shabby dressing, one can tell that he want to go in to look for young ladies but does not have money thus could only look on greedily. What is the difference? This person. Jiao Yang scrutinized from a distant, the silhouette looks somewhat familiar like one had seen somewhere before. Pei Lang. Zi Jingxing said, who is Pei Lang? Ji Yushu asked, a teacher in Guangwentang. I remember. Jiao Yang also said, previously one had seen him at the palace banquet. But why is he here, teacher? Ji Yushu narrowed his eyes, a teacher also come to a place of pleasure? This Guang Wentang is said to be the academy that all the Ding Capital's nobles want to enter. How could a teacher there, be this morally corrupt? You also wander all day at places of pleasure, how are you not morally corrupt? Jiao Yang questioned Ji Yushu. Ji Yushu refuted, I am not one who teach students. Shut up. Zi Jinxing said, you two did not even discover such a big individual appearing here? I did not recognize him. Ji Yushu said with grievances, There are so many people coming and going at Bao Xiang Lu and I only paid attention to the abnormal. This gentleman looked normal and how would I know that he was also a teacher? Jiao Yang looked at Zi Jingxing, You find that Pei Lang is a problem? But he is just a poor scholar. Xin Miao never did unnecessary things. Thus there must be some intentions behind letting her subordinate look for Liu Ying. Previously I did not understand but now upon seeing him, one understood. Zi Jingxing's gaze landed on Pei Lang. You are saying. Jiao Yang thoughts were roaming. This Shen Miao went in such a big round, 
in fact to target Pei Lang, Zi Jingxing smiled and there seemed to be a deeper meaning in his gaze, did not know why, but one felt that Shen Miao paid extra attention to this Pei Lang. A simple investigation indicated that Pei Lang was only a poor scholar, and this in it is a problem. Is not this simple? Ji Yushu called out, I know the reason behind. Jiao Yang and Zi Jingxing turned around together and stared at him. Ji Yushu cleared his throat and his eyebrows danced as he said, It's simply very simple. When I see that silhouette, one could tell that the person is especially good looking and in addition with being a teacher, this show that he have profound knowledge. Shen young lady is after all a budding beauty opening to the beginning of spring and has a darker heart. Who knew that the teacher had a gilded exterior but is shabby and ruined on the inside, and is a hypocrite gentleman that wander around brothels. In a fit of anger Shen young lady simply ordered her own subordinate to buy that lady's time. Wait. Jiao Yang asked. Why does Shen Miao buy Liu Ying's time when she likes Pei Lang? Ji Yushu thought strenuously for a moment before replying, Most probably because Pei Lang cannot afford Liu Ying, so Shen young lady let her servant buy Liu Ying's time. Pei Lang cannot be even compared to a servant so he would definitely be very angry. Shen young lady want to make Pei Lang die from an excess of anger. The more Ji Xu Yu spoke. The more excited he became that even his saliva was spitting everywhere. He almost climbed on top of the table. You all see how much pain had Pei Lang inflict on Shen young lady. A young lady who actually leave no expense on a beauty. Jiao Yang was supporting his aching forehead. Ji Yu Shu, is it that you heard some odd play in the brothel? You all go play. I will leave first. Zi Jing Xing stood up with an expressionless face and glanced at Ji Yu Shu. If you are too free, the tower prison lacks personnel. So go pack up and head there with Tai Yi. Ji Yushu immediately quietened down like he was stuck with lightning. At the other end in the Liu Ying's building, Mo King was sitting at the table drinking tea as usual. Liu Ying had now completely given up on Mo King. Previously she still wanted to conquer the man. But now she did not have any thoughts of conquering and completely had no temperament. She did not even bother to put on makeup and just walked over to pick up the silver piece, that Mo King placed on the table, into the box and sat opposite to Mo King. She poured herself a cup and said not warmly or coldly, thanking gentleman Mo for rooting for Liu Ying like usual, else Liu Ying would not be able to eat anything in such a poor situation. When the new Persian dancers snatched the other young ladies' regular patrons, only Mo King regularly called her out. The young ladies were envious and jealous of Liu Ying so much, but they did not know that in Liu Ying's eyes, Mo King was just an eccentric weird person. Most likely Mo King liked to spend money and be dazed in the place of pleasure. Liu Ying did not intend to talk to Mo King. This Mo King had come for so many times but had never talked to her a sentence before. If he did not speak to the young lady who welcomed him every time, Liu Ying would think that he was a mute. But today Mo King unprecedentedly spoke to her. Mo King said. It is not me. Liu Ying was so surprised that she could only stare at him wide-eyed. Ah, the person who gave you money is not me. Mo King said. Liu Ying did not understand. What money? My master want me to come here every three days to look for you, give you money and do nothing. This was probably the longest sentence Mo King said in Bao Xiang Lu. But when the words were spoken, the gaze from Liu Ying's eyes suddenly became vigilant and she stood up. Who is your master? Mo King shook his head, cannot disclose. You. Liu Ying glared at him. Master said that in a few days she, in Chinese it would sounds the same when referring to a she and a he, will come over to look for you. Mo King said, so temporarily do not accept other customers. Liu Ying laughed, older brother, I do not know who your master is and what he wants to do. But I am a young lady of Bao Xiang Lu and currently in a slump. I am not the new hot favorite so if I do not accept other customers, what do I eat and drink? Will you support me? Mo King did not say anything. Seeing Mo King keeping quiet, 
Liu Ying gotten more angry and an unknown fire started burning. Other men would now say some appeasing words of I will support you even if they were not sincere. Even if it was to bluff others, no one would treat the words said at the place of pleasure seriously. This smoking was different and was simply a stubborn lump who loved to be serious and not willing to say any lies or pleasing words. He wanted to coax when she got angry but when he opened his mouth, Liu Ying had gotten silent. Mo King was one of the people in the place of pleasure and he had said himself that he was just following his master's instructions. Thinking about that, one find that there was no meaning to ask him anything. Mo Qin saw the changes in Liu Ying's expressions and was unable to make heads or tails of it. After hesitating, he said a sentence that Shen Miao did not instruct him to say. My master is a good person. You do not need to be afraid. Liu Ying was briefly stunned and when she looked at Mo King, he lowered his head to drink the tea. Unfathomably Liu Ying's mood gotten better and she said, Why should I believe you? Mo King, this night was one without stars or moon. Shen Miao was in Luo Zhu Yan's room, accompanying her for a chat before preparing to return back to her own courtyard. On the way back Gings told Shen Miao what she inquired during the day, young lady, one heard that the Jing family had left for Suzu O oh this afternoon and upon leaving, they even swept off every single valuable thing in the side courtyard of Rong Jing Tang. This is truly a bandit conduct. Old Furan was so angry that she almost had a stroke again. This had a stroke again was said with ridicule. Everyone also knew that when old Shen Furan was flustered and exasperated she would involuntarily have a stroke. However it can be said that one had really met one's match. A shameless one encountering an even more shameless one. Speaking of which. One really admire the thickness of the Jing family, to be able to take away wrong Jing Tang's stuff. It is a marvel. One did not expect that the Jing family would pompously vow to seek an explanation for Biao young lady, but now left back to Suzhu with tails between their legs and even not caring about Biao young lady. They obviously knew that Biao young lady would not have a good ending in the Sun family, but did not think of any way out. They originally said it so ruthlessly just to demand more money. Jing said, Commoners do not fight with officials. Shen Miao's lips slightly hooked up, the Jing family also knew that they have caused a big disaster. All not good people. Jing's lips twitched. Shen Miao did not express an opinion. The Jing family returned to Suzhou through the nights but how could they be able to return? Sun Yan Zhang was not any soft persimmon. Originally when Shen Kaiyu had the mishap, Jing Chu Chu escaped but the others from the Jing family were unable to escape at all. Sun Yan Zhang was not a soft-handed person, so no one knew what happened on the journey back to Suzhou. When Shen Miao walked into the courtyard and was just about to push open the doors, she suddenly paused and swept a look at the windows. Jing's. Shen Miao said, go and boil some water. I would like to bath so make it hotter. Jing's was stunned for a moment before she nodded her head in compliance. Shen Miao pushed the door open and entered. She walked across the outer hall and past the folding screen before entering her own room and closed the door. The flame of the oil lantern was slightly flickering, and one could see that there was a person sitting skewed in front of the table. The entire body seemed to be covered with a flowing dark gold color, lining the entire darkness in the room with glistening light. One of his hands was balled into a fist and the other hand was lazily flipping the book on Shen Miao's desk. Upon hearing the movement, one casually turned one's head over, revealing a face with red lips and white teeth. Why only return so late? Zi Jingxing was somewhat dissatisfied. I did not seem to have invited you. Shen Miao looked at him calmly and said, Little Marquis Zi, I have waited for you for a long time. Zi Jingxing's eyebrows raised, had gone hungry. Shen Miao responded, Get lost. 